In this last video for the human population section, we will talk about how population and environment are linked. This video will be relatively short, in part because we'll keep coming back to these points for the rest of the course. The key questions we'll cover here are how population growth impacts the environment in a general sense, how wealth and affluence influences resource use, and how and why wealth can have varied effects on things like pollution. There's a well-known concept in environmental classes called the IPAT model. This is an example of one of those conceptual models I was talking about in the last video. I personally am not a big fan of this model because I think it's oversimplistic, but it's still worth mentioning here. The basic idea is that the environmental impact of anything is a product of population times affluence times technology. The population part of that is pretty straightforward. More people almost always means more impact. The affluence part is, is relatively straightforward because in general, the wealthier a person or a nation is, the more impact they will have. Technology, however, is very complicated as we'll talk about in a moment. Taking these one by one and starting with population, we can see why this is pretty straightforward. On average, every person needs, actually physiologically needs, about 2,500 calories per day, at least for a male. More people means more food and more food means more impact on environmental systems. And the same basic math works for energy use and it works for water and waste. The fancy bathroom here, however, is a pretty good transition to talking about affluence. Affluence, as I mentioned a minute or so ago, tends to result in higher impacts. But one distinction I think is important to make is that it's consumption rather than affluence that leads to impact. In general, more affluent people consume more resources, but there are choices involved in that. That fancy marble bathroom on the prior slide is a good example of different types of choices that impact consumption that then impact the environment. We can really see the difference in something like food consumption, where residents of North America consume about 3,500 calories per day, whereas those in Africa consume about 2,500 calories per day. There are many more examples like this, but I think you probably get the general idea. Now, one place where affluence and wealth gets more complicated is when economic resources are deployed specifically to reduce environmental impacts. This happens when we take steps to mitigate air pollution or to reduce water pollution. These steps take resources, and so countries with more wealth often are better positioned to address these types of environmental impacts. Technology is where things get very complicated. If we take the example of coal-fired power plants and high electricity use, then you'll have a lot of impact on greenhouse gas production and air pollution. Switching to solar power to generate electricity will reduce those impacts. A dishwasher is another ex interesting example. Modern efficient dishwashers actually use less water to clean a load of dishes than if you did it by hand in the sink. Of course, they also use electricity. Cars powered by internal and combustion engines create many environmental problems, pollution, greenhouse gases, all of that but transitioning to electric cars can help reduce some of those if they're powered by renewable energy sources. Long story short, technology is a mixed bag with effects running in a lot of different directions. And if you want to understand this, then you actually have to take those pieces apart and look at them very carefully to get to the total impact on the environment. To quickly summarize all of this, population tends to increase impacts. Affluence, or more specifically consumption, tends to increase impacts, except in cases where wealth is used specifically to reduce environmental impacts. And then there's technology, which is complicated and has, in some cases, great potential to harm the environment, and in other cases, great potential to reduce impacts. We'll cover all of this in much more detail as we move forward in the course.